Yeah, soldiers, it is your boy the Amazon Description video, and this is what Naruto is half Yuka, half Uchiha remastered. Hope you guys enjoy a remaster of a critically acclaimed series in terms of some useful stuff. Well, we don't really have to get into that, but socials in right around the screen, and uh, yeah, let's get right into the story. In this canon, I'm going to be making me into a Hyuga since it's a lot easier than making Hiyashi date someone like Kushin and Makoto and other stuff in between. Everyone else remains the same. And in this timeline, however, I will also be doing a bit of a wife swap. Me until we get Makoto in this timeline, while Fugaku will get Kushina. I did this last time, and I'm doing it again. I don't know why there was some pushback on this decision originally. Actually, I know why, because Me until and Kushina's love story is timeless, I guess. But in this story, I have to do it because it makes just everything work. Anyways, in between, we're going to be having Fugaku and Me until actually be friends in the story. And in case you're asking to yourself, Wait, Fugaku and Mito were not friends? Yep, because in Naruto Light Novels, it is revealed that Fugaku did not really like Mito too much. Anyways, getting into the story, Mito was an orphan to his parents, and Hugo Plan wanted nothing to do with him, so he stays an orphan. He becomes friends with Fugaku, and will eventually find their other halves as they go for the years, with Mito marrying a woman named Makoto, while Fugaku marries Kushina Uzumaki. Following so far? Good. A lot of the stuff that happened in canon happens, but Fugaku is at least there to help, you know, get Mito over maybe some of the regret that he has of not being able to save two of his students, so that's at least something, I guess. Eventually, Mito becomes the fourth Hokage, and while there is some apprehension from some village members due to Mito's wiping Uchiha, that is wiped away by Fugaku since he brings up his accomplishments during the war, his strength, and other stuff like that. Eventually, both Fugaku and Kushina would have a kid, and they name him Itachi, and he is a prodigy, unlike in canon. But even more so due to him being a half Uzumaki, which is pretty, pretty good for him. Me and Toe and Fugaku during peacetime are working together to mend the relationship between the village and the Uchiha clan. Slowly but surely it's working, and the village is becoming more accepting of Uchiha clan members. Naruto is also eventually born years later, and will end up being the first child of Me and Toe and Makoto. Eventually, Kushina will have another birth of her own, so Itachi and Naruto are being babysat by a relative. While this happens, as Mito and Fugaku try to do whatever they can to make sure that the Nine Tails doesn't come out. Makoto will want to look at the baby as she's there as well, and she'll go with Furuzen's wife in order to take a closer look at him, which proves it to be a mistake as she'll end up dying because Obito exists. Obito will kill both Makoto and Furuzen's wife, which will obviously put Fugaku and Mito in a state of alarm. Mito is angry at the circumstances right now. Now, but he has a bigger problem as he has to protect baby Sasuke. Kushina will end up getting Shane High like in canon, meaning that Fugaku has to leave it up to Mito in order to help protect his wife. Mito looks at Fugaku and says, I will get your wife back. I promise you. Fugaku will look at Mito and will smile and will say, I know you will. Now do your job, Lord Forth. Mito smiles and will give Fugaku a Hiroshin kunai. Mito explains that he will send him back to his compound to put Sasuke in the cradle. And once Mito puts down a knife from where he's traveling, the knife will light up. And all Fugaku has to do is put some chakra in it, and Fugaku can join Mito in the fight. Fugaku will thank Mito, and he'll be teleported to his house, and will put baby Sasuke in the cradle. Fugaku will say to him, Hold tight, son. Me and Lord Forth are gonna get your mother back. I promise. Fugaku gets a signal for the knife and we teleport to the battlefield with Mianto and both will try to rescue Kushina. Eventually, the battle, however, will end up going the same with Mianto having to sacrifice himself and Kushina trying to protect baby Sasuke who ends up getting sealed with the Nine Tails in this timeline, which will end up causing Fugaku to have to raise two babies, baby Naruto and baby Sasuke, along with Itachi, but he's more of a toddler at this point. Fugaku does have relatives to help him out, but they still cause chaos for him because obviously, again, raising two babies is a little bit annoying. Itachi, meanwhile, is a prodigy and is able to graduate pretty early at around the age of 8. Meanwhile, Fugaku discovers that he unlocked the Mangekyo Sharingan, which makes sense considering that he lost his best friend, his wife's best friend, and his wife. So, yeah, his eyes were definitely going to awaken until Mangekyo. However, the main problem for him is that this is a regular Mangekyo Sharingan, meaning that he'll end up going blind unless he can find someone's eyes to put into his socket. But that could potentially mean that he would have to take the eyes from his sons, and he's not going to do that. Eventually, however, there's issues with the Hyuga clan as they are trying to save a claim in Naruto, who is half Hyuga, half Uchiha. They are trying to make the argument that they should save a claim in Naruto first because Minto was a Hyuga. Fugaku's like, 
but Manta told me to take care of Naruto. Why should he go with you guys, the ones who didn't even care about Manto and left him as an orphan? Unfortunately, Manto was never able to get that agreement into writing, so the Hyuga clan can get their mitts on Naruto. However, Hiruru decides to be an active Okage for once and will allow a compromise where Fugaku takes Naruto for four days a week while the Hyuga clan will take him for three days a week. Fugaku is annoyed, but at least he still has his son. During the times that Naruto is with the Hyuga clan, he meets a girl named Hinata and she's pretty kind to him and then there's this branch kid named Neji and he seems pretty cool but then an event in his life caused him to become a jerk and we all know what that is. Naruto feels welcomed by people like Itachi and Sasuke and Fugaku but with the Hugas he doesn't even feel like he's part of a real family which is very concerning the fact that the Hugas only want him because he's half Hyuga half Uchiha. Naruto at times comes to Fugaku and talks about how he's not really happy with the Hugas and the main branch members don't really true him that well at all. Fugaku worries that the Hugo clamors are actually hurting Naruto mentally physically or in other words abuse. This is heightened by the fact that Fugaku started training as Mangekyo Sharingan and feels like if he really wanted to he could destroy the Hugo clan members if he had the motivation and hurting his son is definitely a good piece of motivation to want to do horrible things to the Hugo clan. Unfortunately over the years Fugaku is starting to go insane over the years due to Mangekyo and is more and more convinced the Hugas are abusing his son. In reality, they're just being jerks to him, and the illusion of Mangekyo Sharingan starts to make him go insane with these types of thoughts. Fugaku eventually will try to take matters into his own hands, and he believes he should take care of the main branch himself and get back to the Hyuga clan. Fugaku then decides to do it at night. He holds some hostages as he has Naruto come home on this day and will just try to destroy them, and will actually end up killing some main branch members. Unfortunately for him, he is then captured by the Anbu. Fugaku realizes he messed up and will not have to face the consequences for that. The trap for Fugaku ends up making sure that he loses his son to the Hugh clans completely. He has tears in his eyes, but feels like he definitely deserves these consequences, but he also feels like he cannot let this stand at all. He says to Naruto, I promise Naruto, I'll find a way to get you back. Naruto nods and believes he will fulfill that promise. Fugaku then thinks about everything that has happened to him for these past 78 years, and he feels like his life has been completely destroyed, and wishes things could have been different. He wishes that Mito, Kashina, and Makoto were still here, and he wishes that he had not been screwed by the Hugas. But most of all, he wishes he didn't assume that the Hugas were doing bad stuff to his son and went off on them. He didn't have enough evidence to it, it was just from his own delusions. He really doesn't know what's going on with him. Itachi, who is the Ambo at this point, will worry about his father and decides to have a chat with him. He tells his father that he loves him and he feels sorry that he may never see Naruto again. And Vigayak will say that it's all his fault as he sheds tears. Itachi will have a deep breath and will say that based on the information he has, it might not be all his fault. He tells Fugaku that a bunch of this stuff that's been happening to him has been orchestrated by Danzo. Fugaku asks what does he mean and he learns that the elders along with Danzo have been against him from the very beginning and even worked with the Hugas to make sure that Fugaku would suffer as the elders still have a bias towards the Uchiha clan. Fugaku was enraged hearing this as the elders were the ones who were screwing him over. Fugaku then comes to a conclusion and decides to tell it to Itachi. For too long, Uchiha clan members had like me have been screwed by this village. I foolishly thought relations were improving, but once Mito died, it all went down the drain. Hiruzen is too weak to stand up to these elders, as he is not as strong as he used to be. There needs to be a shakeup in this village if we are going to finally be treated as people. And so as the leader of this clan, I will lead my clan members, and we will. Fugaku then turns on his Magekyo, plan and execute a coup d'etat. Itachi's eyes widen in shock. Itachi will ask Fugaku after he suggested coup d'etat, Are you crazy? Why a coup? And aren't those Mangekyo Sharingan eyes? Fugaku will say, to answer your second question, yes. I unlocked it after Ninetales incident and trained with it in secret. To answer your first question, how am I crazy? If there's gonna be real change with our clan, with how it's treated, we need to overthrow the village elders. And Danto. Jerusalem will have the opportunity to surrender, and he'll be spared if he does, but if he tries to stop him, me, I'll kill him too. Itachi is just speechless. Now is a bit of a conflict. There may come a point for when Itachi has to make a choice whether he chooses the village or his clan. On one hand, a coup would be devastating for the village, but on the other hand, can he really go against his father? He decides to talk Fugaku out of this. Do you really have to do a coup? You can just take out the village elders if they are the problem. Fugaku will say, and will that stop other people from thinking that we are the scourge of the leaf village? It's not just the higher ups that need to die, it's those people too. In addition to those people, the Hugo clan and those of you Sasuke as a monster need to die as well! Itachi then says, So, you have heard what some people have said about Sasuke. Fugaku clenches his fist and says, Yes, I have. 
there are people who even though they know that Manto sacrificed his life for him, they still think my son shouldn't exist. He's some freak that needs to die. Well, how about they die instead? How about they go through the things they want my son to go through, huh? Maybe they'll understand why I shouldn't look at my son like a freak. Itachi says, I understand your anger, but this is not the way. Fugak will say, well, once you come up with a better solution, come to me. But until then, this is happening. Itachi will think for a bit and then remembers Shisui. When Fugaku asks what he means by this, he learns from Itachi that Shisui is the Mikako Sharingan and has a very powerful Genjutsu and Nakoda Matsukami. After Itachi spends some time explaining it, Fugaku will ask, you sure this will work? Itachi says, yes, I believe in my friend. And if it fails, I will follow along with your plan, no questions asked. Fugak will think for a bit and then will say, Alright, fine, this better work. The plan for Dakota Masakami is for them to alter the minds of the Hugo clan members and the village elders. That way, the hatred for the Uchiha clan disappears. Itachi then decides to go talk with Hiruzen. After Itachi finishes his explanation, Hiruzen gives off a very terrifying aura. He is mad and that does not bode well for Danzo at all. Hiruzen will say, Leave now, Itachi. I got work to do. Itachi nods and leaves the room. Hiruzen sets off to find Donzo. Donzo, who is walking up to the Hokage Tower, will be asked by Hiruzen to talk with him privately outside the village. After Hiruzen gives him a gist that he has gone too far, he needs to be punished for his actions, and that means execution. Hiruzen puts himself in his battle gear and gets to work, and will smack Donzo away pretty easily. Donzo asks, so, it's come to this? Hiruzen says, it unfortunately has. He goes for some hand seals and unleashes the fire dragon jutsu, a massive one at that. Donzo has no choice to avoid and then will get hit by Hiruzen. After a fight that is mostly dominated by Hiruzen, Donzo ends up escaping, causing Hiruzen to remark to himself, Welp, I guess well, I have one more ninja to add to the bingo book. Eventually, Shisui, Itachi, and Hiruzen gather up the villagers and the Hugh clan members included, and Shisui will unleash the Kodama Sakami, eliminating the hatred that they have for the Uchiha clan. The next stage of the plan is to use the other Kodama Sakami on Fugaku in order to get Fugaku to become less insane. Fugaku will learn from the trio that he'll probably get his son back pretty soon, and this causes Fugaku to fall to the ground and he cries, because he realizes he tried to rally his fellow clan members to form a coup, where he could have killed fellow villagers and fellow clansmen would have also died as well. He could have traumatized Naruto if he saw what his own father was doing, or or saw what was happening to his village. Fugaku feels remorse and says, I don't know if you can forgive me, Lord Ferd. I tried to form a coup against this village. I was angry and sad when the Hugas took my son from me. I was angry when I learned that the elders helped the Hugas take my son from me. I acted on this rage, including all the hatred people have for me because I was an Uchiha, and nearly caused an event that would kill so many people and would have not solved anything. I don't know if I could forgive myself, Lord Ferd. Fugaku continues to cry as he feels extreme guilt from this entire debacle. Hiruzen smiles and will say that it might not be truly your fault. You do it to Mangekyo that probably has been warping your mind. But I have a way to prevent this from happening again. Shish will step forward and Fugaku will be explained to by Hiruzen about the second stage of the plan which is to use the Konomatsukami to have him not suffer the effects of the curse of hatred. Fugaku will accept this and it will end up working, meaning that Fugaku will not have to deal with the effects of the curse of hatred. Fugaku eventually gets his son back and is pretty happy. Over the academy years, Naruto is trained by Itachi and Shisui whenever they're available. Naruto and Sasuke will be able to unlock the first Tomoe of the Sharingan, and Sasuke will be able to get the second Tomoe by the end of graduation because of his Uzumaki genes. Naruto is not going to fall too far behind, however, because he has to be Yakugan. A bonus from when Fugaku got custody of his son is that he got copies of the Hyuga's Gentle Fist Style and their techniques because Naruto is entitled to those. So he gets access to the Gentle Fist Style and is very proficient in it, and because of this, Naruto by the end of his days at the Academy will learn two Hyuga techniques, the Furry Two Palms and Rotation, or the Kaiten. Both Sasuke and Naruto are very efficient in Fire Release as they get the Fireball Jutsu by the end of graduation, as well as the Phoenix Fire Jutsu. Sasuke in this timeline will also have to learn a Shao clone jutsu, most because, well, he has the problem that Naruto had, which is lack of shock control because he has too much of it. So he eventually learns it and will make use of it as a weapon. Naruto will also help out Hinata as he sees Hinata as a bit of a sister figure. So he helps her improve in the gentle fist and she'll gain some confidence. And again, I said this before, but I'm gonna say this again, no Naruhina, none. 
okay? I'm not doing some cousin stuff or blah, blah, I, I don't care. No, I'm not doing the Alabama. With the improvements of the gentle fist technique, Hinata eventually learns the furry two palms by the end of graduation. Eventually, in Naruto and Sasuke's final day of the academy, or second to last final day of the academy, Naruto and Sasuke learn their individual secrets. That Sasuke is the holder of the Nine-Tailed Fox, while Naruto is the son of the Fourth Hokage. Sasuke and Naruto are both shocked to learn this, but they're pretty accepting slash excited. Naruto, by the end of the conversation with Fugaku, will end up saying, You may not be my father biologically, but you'll always be my father to me. Both Fugaku and Naruto share a hug, and again, a nice father-son moment. I love Ryan nice father-son moments. They're pretty wholesome. The next day is graduation, and yep, Naruto and Sasuke clear the graduation exam pretty easily, and Iruka decides to split the rookie of the year between the two of them. Naruto and Sasuke smile and high-five each other, and eventually Fugaku will meet Naruto and Sasuke to celebrate. However, an alarm will go off in the village during dinner as the scroll ceiling has been stolen. Fugaku, Itachi, and Suishi will leave to deal with it, but Naruto and Sasuke will decide to deal with the perpetrator themselves. Naruto, using his Byakugan eye, will be able to find a person with the large scroll, and Naruto and Sasuke will get to work. They'll catch up to Mizuki, and Naruto and and Sasuke will beat him up. Not a bad debut for our Genin, not gonna lie. Later on in the week, Naruto and Sasuke will head back to Academy to see which teams they'll be ending up on. Both want to end up on the same team, but they don't think that's gonna be very likely. But to their surprise, they do. Iruka announces, Team 7 will consist of Sasuke Uchiha, Naruto Uchiha, and Hinata Hyuga. Naruto and Sasuke are both shocked that they're on the same team, but they are pretty happy as well. Naruka then finishes with, Your sensei is Kakashi Hatake. And that makes Naruto and Sasuke very excited as Kakashi had visited them when they were kids. They look up to him as a brother figure in addition to Shishui and Itachi. So they're pretty happy with their team. A lot. Meanwhile, with teammate, that will consist of Sakura, Kiba, and Shino, with Kurana Yuhi as her sensei, and Team 10 remains the same, their sensei being Awesome Saratobi. To the surprise of Naruto and Sasuke, Kakashi's only 10 minutes late instead of 2 hours late. Kakashi will say, Sorry, I'm late. Naruto will say, Late? You're actually earlier than you usually are. Are, are. are you okay, Kakashi? Kakashi will say, that's Kakashi sensei to you. And I could miss the opportunity to start teaching my little brothers, so I did not waste too much time. Sasuke will say, well, that makes sense. Kakashi then calls the three getting to the roof, and Team 7 will head to the roof and begin their journey as Shinobi. A couple notes before we continue. Naruto has unlocked a 2 Tomoe Seda Sharingan, though it hasn't really been needed here because, well, he's against Kakashi, so we can't really take him on individually. And Mizuki is just Mizuki. He does not need a Sharingan for Mizuki at all. A light breeze could demolish Mizuki easily. Team 7 arrive there, and they will be told that they'll be given in a test that determines whether or not to become Genin, which everyone's like, okay, let's just do this, I guess. Kakashi will reveal the test to involve two bells in the bell test, and in this timeline, well, how will this bell test go with a Naruto, Sasuke, and Hinata team? Well, pretty good for Team Naruto. As Naruto and Sasuke already have a lot of chemistry together, being brothers, and Hinata is just an easy person to work with. So, the trio is able to actually pass with enough teamwork, and they are able to become Genin. Naruto and Sasuke go home and tell their father, Itachi and Suishui, the good news, and they all have a dinner to celebrate, and now we can move on to the D-rank missions. They're boring, so let's get right into a C-rank mission since this team cannot take it anymore. Kakashi will give his team a C-rank, which will involve helping some merchants transport some stuff that is meant for the Leaf Village, and they need some protection from bandits. Team 7 is able to accomplish this mission again pretty easily, and that's a pretretty successful c rank for them meanwhile with teammate with Kuronai, shino sakura and kiba they'll get their own c rank mission which will involve protecting a bridge builder named tazuna however this mission takes a turn when the demon brothers attack and Kuronai, while able to take care of them is not really happy that tazuna lied to them so after she hears tazuna's story she'll allow the mission to continue as long as they get back up so the backup they get is freaking itachi uchiha 
Oh, poor Zabuza and Haku. Zabuza will get clapped in the first meeting against Itachi because that's how it goes. And then the second fight, it's no better as Itachi kills Zabuza and Haku will end up getting packed up as well. The bridge is named the Great Itachi Bridge as Itachi has single-handedly freed everyone from the clutches of Gato. Itachi cannot wait to tell his siblings about this mission as it was a pretty fun experience. Well, for him, I guess. <laughs> we can now move on to the next two months where Naruto is obviously going to put together a lot of his skills. During the first month or so of his ninja career, Naruto was already able to get the Dragon Fire Jutsu along with Sasuke while also getting the Air Palm. Sasuke got the Shao Shuriken Jutsu in addition to the Dragon Fire Jutsu, while Hanada worked on the rotation and is successfully able to acquire it, unlike original Hanada. During these two months, Naruto and Hanada are able to get the 64 Palms, while Sasuke gets the Fire Vortex Jutsu. Everyone else able to get Tree Climbing and Water Walking, which will actually have Kakashi take his team on a low b rank mission, concerning the progress of his team already. The mission itself pertains to ninja causing issues with a village that is a little bit near the leaf village, with some of the ninja at most being tuning level. The goal of the mission is to either kill them or capture them, whichever option is easier. The team heads to the site, and Naruto and company will notice that the shinobi have a musical note on their headbands, which is a little bit strange. Kakashi will put off the signal by firing off some smoke bombs, and a ninja will be ambushed. Naruto, Sasuke, and Hanada will deal with the getting with ease, as they can't keep up with the Taijutsu ability of Naruto and Hinata, nor touch Sasuke unless they want to get burned. Then there are three tuning with the musical note that appear that will prove to be the most difficult part of this entire mission. Kakashi will battle with wind tuning, and despite being a Joni, he is blindsided by attacks of the sound tuning as he uses sound golems and anklets to attack his opponent. However, Kakashi eventually figures him out and demolishes him. Meanwhile, Sasuke and Hinata will take on one tuning while Naruto takes on the other. Sasuke and Hinata are able to win their matchup after Hinata finishes him off with the 64 palms which allows him to go help out naruto who is in the battle of his life trying to deal with the sound tuning but naruto is able to hit him with the rotation then fires up the air palm which takes out a bunch of the tuning's chakra points naruto then charges him and will fire off a fire dragon juicy which the sound ninja can only dodge but he takes a bit of the heat burning his arm naruto then emerges in front of him and while the sound ninja tries to kick naruto it turns out to be a shadow clone as naruto has learned that because sasuke allowed him to but he can only make one or two clones at most the man eyes wide and then the real Naruto unleashes a 64 palm of his own and will defeat the sound ninja as he dies from the 64 palms attack. Naruto falls to his knees after using a lot of chakras to win but he is victorious. Kakashi congratulates his team for their efforts and announces that they'll be in the training exams one month from now. So Naruto and Hinata will just nod and be very happy they're going to the training exams and Hinata will go tell her father good news as she knows that she can become a training she just has to seize the opportunity and hope it doesn't let her pass her. Unfortunately her father wants none of this and will say, good for you, just one thing, you better not embarrass the clan, as he still sees Hinata as a bit of a failure. Hinata's mood kind of sours as she can't understand why her just can't be normal and praise her for her accomplishments. She's been getting stronger and stronger because of Naruto and Sasuke, but it doesn't seem like he'll ever acknowledge her, and that is why Hinata will just curl up into a ball and cries in her room. She hates everything in this clan. She hates the elitism, she hates the main branch and branch family distinction. She hates all of it. Hinata wants to change this, as she has seen what has happened with her cousin Neji. She wants to find a way to free him of that seal. Maybe then he'll go back to being a nice person. Maybe he'll stop being a jerk to her for something that she had no control over. Hinata hopes that one day she'll get back at the elders for everything, and maybe one day her father will acknowledge her. Afterwards, Hinata will try to learn the 120 palms technique. She will be able to get close but she's not there yet. Naruto would get the 120 palms himself though while also getting some additional fire juices along with Sasuke. After a bit more training Naruto and Sasuke are able to get that for Tomoe which just shows that Naruto and Sasuke are prodigies in their own right. Kakashi decides to have Naruto and Sasuke work on their second elements which means that Naruto works on wind manipulation while Sasuke works on light manipulation. Later on as Naruto and Sasuke are working on this Kakashi will learn that the sound ninja that he fought are actually trying to enter a tuning and he also learns that it was established by none other than Orochimaru, which causes Kakashi to be a little bit terrified, as it means that Orochimaru was up to something. They can't reject the sound applicants, as this possible does ninja could hold valid information about Orochimaru and his plans, but 
it's still a bit dangerous considering that, well, they're loyal to Rochamaru. Kakashi will still let his Genin take the exams, but tells the team to be very careful of any sound injury that they come across in the tuning exams, which is Genin nod in response. Fast forward to the start of the tuning exams are Konohamaru bumps into Konkuro, who wants to pulverize the kid, but Naruto and Sasuke step in, and the San Kunoichi is definitely impressed by the Uchiha pair. When Konkuro tries to unleash his crow, a boy named Gar appears, and he'll stop his siblings, and will acknowledge that he wants to fight Naruto and Sasuke. The actual day the tuning exams arrives as the team heads to the academy. They encounter Rock Lee, who wants to fight Naruto and Sasuke with only Taijutsu, and goes on and on about being a Splendid Ninja who only uses Taijutsu, and then Naruto says, how can you be prove that you're a Splendid Ninja by restricting us to only Taijutsu? We're not at full strength, plus you're probably amazing at Taijutsu. It wouldn't prove anything, except you're really good at Taijutsu, nothing else. Lee realizes he has a point and says that he hopes to fight the machine exams at full strength to prove he's a Splendid Ninja, which causes Naruto and Sasuke to smile and they'll say, bring it on. Team Seven will enter the doors to the exam room and will get ready to take them on. However, inside the exam room, a woman who has the grass ninja headband on her forehead is smiling right at those two boys as she wants their young bodies badly because this woman is a Rochimaru. Or last left off, we had our new Team 7 hanging into the Shining Exam's exam area for the first stage. Meanwhile, Orochimaru has something planned for either Naruto or Sasuke, as he has made a declaration of wanting some Yon Uchiha body. And that is where we pick up our story. The first stage will begin, and Naruto, Sasuke, and Hinata eventually figure out that they have to cheat. And while Sasuke and Hinata do the same thing as they did in canon, Naruto decides to combine both his lineages and essentially does a combination of what Sasuke and Hinata are doing, using Sharnak and the trace moves of the tree in the crowd, and is back on to look at the answers as well. Kinda overkill, but who cares, it's cool. The 10th question thing goes the same as in canon, so now we can move on to the Forest of Death. Team 7 heads into the forest, and will have an easy time getting the required scrolls because of the combination of a much stronger Naruto, Sasuke, and Hinata. And they would have gotten to the tower early if it wasn't for a certain snake. Orochimaru appears with a snake summon that cuts off the trio, which will probably get destroyed by a combination fire vortex jutsu of Naruto and Sasuke. The trio wonders who sent that snake, and they see a woman who gives off a very terrifying aura. Sasuke and Naruto look at each other and know they have to move, so both in an instant, as Orochimaru is getting closer to them, they are able to grab Hinata and get out of there, for now. Hinata would thank Naruto and Sasuke for helping out there as she was completely frozen due to Orochimaru's terrifying aura, but that's not going to last long as the woman, like a college white girl, is ready for round two. Naruto says, there's no way this woman is a Genin. She has a chocolate of a Kage. Something is wrong here. Something that he picked up on with his Vyakugan. The woman says, very perceptive of you, Naruto. I guess since this is a moment where you all die, I think it's time I introduce myself. The woman then reveals herself to be a pale man. Naruto and company are shocked by this turn of events as it seems this woman was actually a man in disguise. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Orochimaru. After Sasuke gets over his shock, Sasuke asks the snake, if you're Orochimaru, then what are you doing here? It can't be to kill some lowly gang like us. There has to be something more involved. Orochimaru grins and says, very good, Sasuke. You seem to have someone figured out my plans. I can't really kill any of you, and you are right. There is a purpose for why I am targeting all of you. Or, should I say, one of you. Naruto will step in and will ask who is he targeting, and then Roshimaru will say, Who am I targeting? It's funny you say that, Naruto. Naruto then realizes that Roshimaru is actually targeting him. Wait, why are you targeting me? Roshimaru says, Because I want my Yon Uchiha body. But not only that, it would also be great if I could get a Yon Hyuga body. But what's better than a Yon Uchiha body and a Yon Hyuga body? A Yon Uchiha Hyuga body! Orochimaru starts to drool as he finishes his rambling. Naruto then asks, a little bit disgusted, Do you like kids or something? Orochimaru then says, No. And yes! Orochimaru will then dash towards Naruto. Sasuke and Hinata will try to counter the snake and protect Naruto, only to get smacked away because Orochimaru is him. Naruto then decides to unleash his great fire dragon Jusu, which will hit Orochimaru, but does nothing to him. Orochimaru then says, yeah, that would have done a number on any shinobi, but unfortunately, I'm him. Orochimaru then smacks Naruto away, and then Sasuke tries to get his own crack at Orochimaru again. And this time, he'll fire off his own fire vortex jutsu, but unfortunately, that doesn't work either. And Orochimaru expresses that he wishes he could have him, but he has the QB. 
Hina fires off an air palm, but Rochemar dodges it, and then Hina tries to 64 palm him, but Rochemar just dodges all the strikes and smacks Hinata away. Naruto tries to punch, but he just has his arm grabbed and gets slammed to the ground. Rochemar will then grab Naruto by his throat and will proceed to punch him repeatedly. Sasuke seeing this will get angry to the point he awakens the zero tail state of the nine tails, which definitely gives him a power boost. Rochemar sees this, and while he knew Sasuke was the Jinchuriki of the nine tails, seeing this power firsthand is incredible. Rochemar says, so this is the power of the nine tails. Come at me, Sasuke. Save your brother, Uchiha. Sasuke responds accordingly. By dashing his speed, Orochimaru is not expecting, and he gets sent flying to a tree. Orochimaru sees Sasuke's red eyes and the chalk around him and wants to see more of him. He engages Sasuke, and then Orochimaru will use a lot more power than expected, but he'll still be able to defeat Sasuke, and will try to put the curse mark on him because he wants to at least try. It's probably going to fail, but it can't hurt to try. He bites Sasuke's neck, and he collapses, and Orochimaru regretfully sees the seal not form properly, and then disappear. Orochimaru will then put his attention towards Naruto, and then Naruto in his anger will try to strike Orochimaru, but it doesn't work at all. Not even when Naruto unleashes an upgrade version of the Phoenix Fire Jutsu, the Phoenix Blooming Fire Jutsu, that he just so happened to unlock in his anger. Rochimaru, although impressed, is just not enough. Naruto then tries to unleash 120 palms on Rochimaru, but he dodges them all, except a couple which do hurt Rochimaru a bit, but it's nothing to be worried about. Then, Rochimaru will smack Naruto to the ground, and now will come in, and then Orochimaru is about to dodge, but he'll sense a power spike and wants to feel it for himself. Hinata then uses 120 palms on Orochimaru. It is incomplete, but the attack does put Orochimaru on the ground. Hinata goes to Naruto and tells him they have to take Sasuke and get out of there, but then Orochimaru will just shed his skin and will come out completely unscathed. Orochimaru smiles evilly and says, I am incredibly impressed with you. You're Hinata, aren't you? The heiress of the Hyuga clan. The fact you're able to use the 120 palms on me as a getting is definitely impressive. I expected it from someone like Naruto, but I guess I should have also expected from the heiress of the Hyuga clan. After Orochimaru expresses that he's him again, he smacks him out away, and then Naruto will get bitten by Orochimaru, giving him the curse mark. Hinata, in her anger, will try to use the last restraint to strike Orochimaru, but Orochimaru raises his hand and says, I wouldn't do that. I've already got what I wanted. If you try to strike me again, I will not only kill you, but Sasuke as well. Hinata has no choice but to stop on her tracks, as she knows he could definitely do something like that. Rochimaru will then say, Good girl. Now, it's time for me to leave. Rochimaru then disappears into a tree, and Hinata decides to use whatever strength she has left to get her teammates to safety. Afterwards, she then collapses. A little while later, she will wake up and will see Naruto and Sasuke are still knocked out, while Hinata herself is still reeling from the last battle. However, she does have soldier pills, which are given to Naruto and Sasuke before the training exams from Fugaku, just in case. Hinata will take the soldier pills and will get a bit of an energy boost, and Sasuke will then stir and he'll wake up, and then Hinata will explain everything that happened. Sasuke is mad that he let the happen to Naruto, and he decides to examine Naruto, and yep, the mark is there. Sasuke sees this, and then he has a flashback to well, while he was in this mindscape, which was a face-to-face -face encounter with the Nine Tails. The Tail Beast will say, You can thank me later. Sasuke will say, For what? The Beast will say, I took care of the snake. Sasuke's eyes widen, and will say, What? do you mean? How did Orochimaru get in here? The tail beast will then explain what happened and what Orochimaru was trying to do to him, but he'll say that he got rid of Orochimaru using his chakra and stuff. Sasuke will gag a bit hearing that Orochimaru was probably going to try to take over his body. Then the fox will continue saying, In any case, what happened to you happened to Naruto. But unlike you, he doesn't have a tail beast to flush him out. Sasuke's eyes wide in horror, and then he'll say, I will not let him do whatever he's planning to do with Naruto. Sasuke will then thank Kurma for flushing out Orochimaru, and the beast will nod and will say, Look, you're waking up. Now get out of here. Scram! Sasuke was pretty intrigued with, with his conversation with the Ninetales, and he could feel that he's not that bad, but he does have a hatred for humans. And he has doubts as to whether or not he can actually quell the hatred. Later on, the sound game will try to attack Team 7, but then Naruto will eventually wake up and will awaken to a Curse Mark 1 state. Naruto starts thrashing the sound game, saying to himself repeatedly, Not be taken away again. I will not go back to them! Sasuke will then wonder what he's talking about, but they 
remembers that Naruto was taken away to live with the Hugas for a bit. Sasuke wonders what happened with the Hugas, but that's not important right now. He will take action and says, Naruto, I'm here. Everything is okay. Naruto will grab his head as it seems he's fine with something right now. Sasuke continues saying, Naruto, please, you can do it. Don't accept his power. It's only corrupting you. Naruto will open his eyes and is able to break out the influence of the mark. Sasuke will hug his brother and Hinata will hug both of them as they start to head to the tower. The group will be able to make it to the tower at the second to last day of the event. And Van Kakashi will seal up Naruto after hearing the news. Although he'll have to call up to Rai to see if he can get rid of it permanently. Afterwards, we have the preliminaries. Hinata in this time will be face off against Ino while Sakura will face off against Neji. Each and every single one of the fights go the same except Sasuke and Naruto dominate their matchups a lot easier than in canon. Hinata will just fresh Ino, while Sakura just gets fresh by Neji. Even though Sakura has had some improvements in this timeline, it's just not enough against a prodigy like Neji. Let's talk about the group's training for now. Naruto will meet up with Jiraiya and will get 6-4 pumped by Naruto for peeping on women. Or at least he tries to because Jiraiya is Jiraiya. Jiraiya and Naruto will then introduce themselves to each other and will give each other a hug and Jiraiya will take a look at the curse mark. And by the way, Naruto is aware that Jiraiya is Gafar in a timeline because Fugaku did tell him that. Jiraiya will then talk about a fury that he's been trying to craft, which is giving people the power of the curse mark but take out the Orochimaru. Naruto decides why and as he understands what Jiraiya is talking about. Jiraiya then continues saying, if you're able to take out Orochimaru's influence, you'll be able to turn Orochimaru's gift against him. This has been something I have been saying since I saw Anko's mark. Although it's incomplete, so for now, I'm just gonna block the curse mark and its influence completely. And then Jirai will seal up Naruto's curse mark completely. And then over the next month, Jirai will go over a couple things with Naruto. First, a Toe contract, then Naruto is able to learn Rasengan. And in addition, some Winjutsu soon, Naruto will be able to pick up the seconds pretty quickly due to the Sharingan and the Byakugan. Meanwhile, Sasuke will learn the Chidori and also some other Light Jutsus, and will also acquire the Cat contract. And finally, with Hinata, she will get some overall improvements to Hyuga Taijutsu and will learn some other tricks, but that'll be safe for later. On the day of the final round, Naruto and Sasuke wake up and will say to themselves, Today is the day I prove myself and become a Shunin. Both head to the arena. Alright, from the last part, we were about to begin the finals for the Chunin exams. The matches for these finals are Naruto vs. Neji, Shino vs. Hinata, Dosu vs. Sasuke, Konkuro vs. Shikamaru, and Tamari versus Gara. And in this canon, none of the participants are going to be late or missing because for Naruto and Dosu, while Naruto has the curse mark in this canon, Jirai and Kakashi have gotten that taken care of. And for Dosu, he's already matched up against Sasuke, so he's not going to do something stupid like he did in the original canon. Sasuke was trained with Kakashi for a while, but he's not going to be late either, and you have to have watched part 4 to figure out why. Now for the actual matches themselves, let's start with Naruto versus Neji. Naruto has vowed to beat Neji here in order to help him realize the error of his ways, and Neji says, If you think you can do that, you hybrid, then come at me, Naruto. Naruto scowls, and both Neji and Naruto clash. Naruto and Neji will engage each other in a battle of gentle fist taijutsu. You'd think that since Naruto has a singular Byakuganai, Neji would have the advantage. However, Naruto has the ability to track Neji's movements to his Sharingan-Eye, making the match even for both Naruto and Neji. Even when both try to use their palm techniques, they just counter the other with the other's palm techniques, and they are both unable to close the other's chakra points. Yes, even the 120 palms because Neji has that in his can because he actually trained for Naruto. However, there is one thing that Naruto does have an advantage in. Firepower. Literally and figuratively. Naruto shouts out, Fireball Jutsu! And will unleash a fireball towards Neji. And Neji knows he will not be able to dodge it in time, so he uses the rotation. Naruto is surprised to see it and is actually impressed. So, you learned the rotation, huh? Naruto says, grinning. Neji says, yes I did. Even though it is a main house technique, it's not impossible for someone like me to learn it. Naruto says, I could care less about this main house and branch house stuff. You are still a powerful opponent. Neji scowls and says, too bad. It is the reason why I will always have to stain for the main house, and why I am the way I am today. Naruto says, I know. I know everything that happened to your father and why you have to stain for Hinata. However, I will not let you stick with that attitude, or that fake crap. Neji says, it is your fate that you will lose to me, Naruto, and there is nothing you can do to change it. 
Naruto and Neji continue to clash and both have proven themselves to be relatively even, but Naruto still has the advantage based on his arsenal of jutsu. Naruto says, Neji, I will say this, if I had fought you a month ago, I don't know if I would have won. I do have a better arsenal, but I feel like we would have stalemated due to how even we are. However, I have one jutsu that will win me this fight. Neji says, what is that jutsu, Naruto? Naruto smiles and says, why don't I just show you? Naruto then focuses and then starts creating an all too familiar ball of chakra. Neji's eyes widen and Fugaku, who is watching the matches in the stands, is in shock but also smiles because he knows what that jutsu is. Naruto shouts, Rasengan! and speeds towards Neji. Neji says, You won't beat me with that jutsu, Naruto! Neji then unleashes a familiar blue dome of chakra and says, Rotation! and tries to block Rasengan with it. However, it is not enough. As Rasengan breaks through the rotation and Naruto slams the ball into Neji, and Neji is sent flying towards the stadium wall. Neji is down, but still has the will to get up because he does not want to lose. But he is banged up. Naruto says, I like how even when pushed into a corner like this, and getting blasted by one of my most powerful jutsus, you still have the will to fight. Neji says, that may be true, but maybe I was wrong. Maybe instead of me winning today, maybe fate has made so you win today against me. Enough with that fate crap. Stop living with a mindset that you can't change your destiny and you are stuck being weak or being strong for the rest of your life. If that was all true, I would still be stuck with those main branch idiots for the rest of my life. But that's not how it was, and I went back to a family that actually loves and cares for me. If that was the case, if fate really was a thing and you can't change it at all, then like you said, wouldn't Hinata stay the same old weak girl you saw her as, instead of getting stronger and making it all the way here? Stop living with this ideology, and start moving past fate starting today, Naruto says. Neji says, you don't understand. You don't understand. What? I don't understand what. Because last I checked, I have been messed with by the main branch as well. So in a way, I can understand your pain. Now, if you want to deal with the main house Hugas, and maybe one day make sure that there are no more victims of the branding that takes place, I will help you to the best of my ability. Do I make myself clear, Huga elders? The elders who are watching this match scowl a bit, and Naruto looks back at them, and then looks back to Neji. Neji says, I am not fully sure of whether or not you can do this, but I would love to see that day. Naruto smiles and says, believe it when I say it, because I am Naruto Uchiha, and me and my brother Sasuke will become the best shinobi the world has ever seen. Neji smiles, as Naruto still has that optimism and confidence he has always had. Neji says, all right then, Naruto. Let me give you what you want. Neji then charges at Naruto and Naruto smiles and says, Here we go! Naruto and Neji then clash, and despite Neji's best efforts, Naruto has a clear advantage due to all the damage Neji has accrued over the course of this match. Naruto then decides to end it and then says, Time to end this, Neji. Eight trigrams, very two palms. And unfortunately for Neji, he cannot block them this time and is down for the count. Naruto wins, and Naruto, after the match, will walk to Neji's room and will look to check on Neji when he sees Hiyashi. Naruto scowls a bit and asks, What are you doing here, Hiyashi? Hiyashi says, I am here to tell Neji something. The truth of his father and my brother's sacrifice that night. And I would also like to apologize to you. Naruto is then confused because he never thought he would say something like that to him. Hiyashi says, I've been regretting my actions recently, and even though I was never really a part of your torment, I also never did anything to stop the elders from making you into their golden weapon. For that, I ask for forgiveness. Naruto says, I don't know if I can trust Hugas like you again, even if you were not the main cause of the stuff that happened to me when I was with your clan, but I'm willing to forgive you at least. You are Hinata's father, so how bad can you be? Hiyashi smiles and says, Thank you, Naruto. Hiyashi then goes into Neji's room, and everything from there will be around the same compared to canon. Now let's go over Sasuke versus Dosu. Dosu wants revenge against Sasuke and eventually Naruto and Hinata for how they humiliated him and his 
teammates. However, from the word go, Sasuke dominates the match and in short will humiliate Dosu once again. Dosu will try to retaliate after the match is over, but will be taken away by the Proctor and other ninja into a jail cell for trying to assault another Leaf Shinobi. Orochimaru just thinks Dosu is such a fool. Next, we move on to Hina versus Shino. This fight is honestly extremely tough as Hinata has made a lot of improvements in this canon, but Shino is still Shino. Shino can unleash insect swarms, but Hinata can use the rotation as canon, which will be a good defense for her and the bugs. Hinata can also most likely tell the difference between a bug clone and Shino, so due to these factors, I will give the edge to Hinata after Shino surrenders because he doesn't want more of his insects harmed. And this surrender will come into play later. Tomorrow and Conquer will surrender, making Shikamaru and Gara the automatic winners of their matches. And next match is Naruto vs Sasuke. Both brothers are really excited to face each other, however, let's just say their matchup will be cut short as in the middle of their match, the sound and the sand will start their invasion. Gar will try to create his sand ball and Sasuke will get a Chidori ready as he does not like the looks of that dome. Tamar and Conquer will try to stop Sasuke, but Naruto and Hinata will get in the way and they're able to allow Sasuke to get a straight shot on Gara. This will cause everyone to head into the forest like in canon and Naruto and company will be joined by Shino and Shikamaru. Shikamaru will deal with the 10 sound ninja while Shino and Hinata will team up to deal with Konkuro, leaving Naruto and Sasuke with Gara. Naruto and Sasuke know this will be the fight of their lives as they face off against Gara, and both brothers will begin their battle with Gara. Naruto and Sasuke together will give Gara the fight of his life for the first time in his life as they both have their own arsenal and fire jutsu and they're both pretty fast in this canon and both are making this battle a living hell for Gara, literally and figuratively. Gara however will make things very difficult for them when he transforms into the Shikaku. Naruto knows while it is possible for him to bring out Gambunta, he does not have enough chakra at the moment from all the battles he has fought today. And yes, I kind of have made Naruto's chakra reserves a bit higher than normal for an Uchiha and a Hyuga, but then again, we don't know how much chakra a Hyuga Uchiha hybrid would have that, or how much control they would have to the point they wouldn't have to worry about that. Plus, Naruto has some other stuff that will be revealed in due time, so stay tuned for that. Anyways, Sasuke however decides to give Naruto the chakra they need, and as both brothers grab onto the other's hands, Naruto summons the to Toe Gambunta. When Gambunta sees Shikaku, he knows that this is not something he can mess around with, and then both brothers will head to the battlefield with the Toad, and they will both together in the end take down Gara, though both brothers are exhausted. Gara fears that his existence will be erased, but Sasuke in this can tells him that he has experienced a little bit of what he experienced back in the Sand Village. And while he cannot fully relate to Gara about being alone and the discrimination that comes with Jinchuriki, because he has had Itachi, Fugaku, Naruto, and other friends and family in his life, he wants to become friends with him so he can no longer be alone, along with, of course, Naruto. Gara's mace at the duo, and afterwards, everything from Kan will wind up the same as Samari and Konkuro take the brother away, all three beating up from the fights that they had. Meanwhile, with Hiruzen versus Orochimaru, in short, Hiruzen in this canon will survive because he'll be accompanied by two powerhouses in this canon who are able to get in the barrier before it closes, Itachi and Shisui. Both make this bout a living hell for Orochimaru as they are both incredibly skilled. Itachi and Shisui cause Orochimaru to want to escape because while he knows he can handle Hiruzen, he cannot handle the greatness of Itachi and Shisui, especially in Itachi with Uzumaki jeans, and he will escape, but barely. However, he will still lose his arms in his cannon, not because of Hiruzen, but because of sealing Jutsu from Itachi, who is using those Uzumaki seals we wish were used in the original Naruto story. Everything else will remain the same as Roshimaru will leave along with the Sound 4. Afterwards, Hiruzen, after seeing the power of the younger generation and realizing how he would have gotten outmatched by Orochimaru if Shisui and Itachi weren't there, he decides to look for his replacement, but not before giving out promotions as his last act as Hokage. He decides on three individuals because of what they showed in the tuning exams. Naruto, Sasuke, and the last guy is Shino Aburame. Hiruzen fought about Hina, but she still needs a little bit of work in his eyes. But she has definitely come a long way. 
Kakashi congratulates Naruto and Sasuke on their promotions, and Naruto and Sasuke just grin with pride. Hiruzen will then announce he will step down from his Hokage position and will be looking for a replacement. Hiruzen names only three potential candidates, Fugaku, Jiraiya, and Tsunade. Fugaku, who was dragged into the council meeting, is shocked and at first wants to jump at the opportunity but then thinks to himself that he is not ready for it. He still has clan duties to take care of and he knows that if he becomes Hokage, he will be less involved in his son's lives. Which could be catastrophic as Orochimaru attacked both of his sons and he wants to make him pay and if he is stuck with Hokage duties, it would make his first for justice a bit more difficult to quench. He has wanted to become the Hokage for a long time, but all these factors make him realize that right now is an impossibility. So he decides to decline the position and while a bunch of the council members are shocked, Hiruzen kind of has a feeling he knows why he declined and is proud of Fugaku as well. He knows he will definitely make a great Hokage one day. Dry declines for obvious reasons, so that leaves us with Tsunade, and Dry will decide to take not only Naruto in this can, but also Sasuke for obvious reasons we'll get to later, but let's just say it has to do with a fox. However, as three of them leave the Leaf Village, Kakashi and company will be attacked by two individuals, who have cloaks with red clouds on them. It is only thanks to the efforts of Itachi, Shishui, and Guy that Kakashi, Asuma, and Kuranai are able to get out of there. Though the only important person here is Kakashi because, well, we know what happens to the other two. Anyways, these two individuals are named Kisame and Kakuzu. And, instead of Naruto, in this cam, they are after Sasuke. Naruto and Sasuke eventually meet these individuals, along with Jiraiya, and it's a very tough battle for them because Kakuzu and Kisame are very strong opponents. Naruto and Sasuke do not want to lose here, especially Naruto, because he doesn't want his brother taken away from him, but it doesn't look like they'll be able to win here. However, a savior comes. Well, two to be more exact. And their names are Itachi and Shishui, who of course came to their rescue. Kisame and Kakusu decide they need to retreat, but not before Kisame says, You see, normally, I would have a different partner than Kakuzu, but he doesn't want to reveal himself yet to you all. Which is why Kakuzu came along instead. You all should be very familiar with him, though. Itachi says, who is it? Kisame grins and says, Oh, Itachi, you will find all of that out in due time. And then both Kakuzu and Kisame head out. Jiraiya will make it clear to Sasuke that he will have to train as hard as he can if he doesn't want to be captured by the Akatsuki. Naruto will say to Sasuke, Sasuke, I promise I will make sure that they don't capture you. This I swear. Sasuke smiles and Taichi will make a similar vow as well. Nice whole Samuchiya family moment right there. Naruto and Sasuke will get some train done in this canon as Naruto will work on his curse mark so it can become a valuable asset for him rather than making him a vessel for Orochimaru, while Sasuke will work on tapping into the power of the Nine Tails. Sasuke, after much meditation, will find his way back into his mindscape and he will be face to face with the Nine Tails once again. Sasuke says, I guess we meet again, huh? The fox nods and says, So, I assume you want some of my power to use on occasion, correct? Sasuke nods and the fox says, What will you do if I refuse and just try everything in my power to break out of here? Sasuke then says, I do have my Sharingan to control you. The fox grins and says, You may have the Sharingan, but you are not as powerful as Madara, at least not yet. Sasuke then says, Well, I think the best thing I can do is hope you are merciful enough to give me the chakra when I need it. However, I think you and I both know we don't want to be captured by the Akatsuki, so why not team up with me? At least until this business is over. The fox smiles and says, Hmm, you have a deal. And the fox from that point on will start giving Sasuke some chakra when he needs it. Meanwhile, with Naruto, due to Silent Jutsu's Jiraiya use, along with some of the Silent Jutsu's Itachi use, he's able to get a good amount of control of the curse mark and is able to power up to level 1, which makes him a bit stronger. Though he has a long way to go before he can use its full power. But at least Naruto is making good progress, so that's good news for him. 
Naruto, Sasuke, and Jirai will then go find Tsunade, and we will have something similar to the original canon. Though, for this story, Naruto will try to add the fire element to his Rasengan, and due to his genetics, he will be able to actually accomplish that. Like, it is kind of self-explanatory, he has a Sharingan at the end of the day, and he is still Naruto. In this canon, as well, Naruto and Sasuke will be the ones who will face off against Kabuto. Well, it isn't a change for Naruto, but it is for Sasuke. And in the end, Naruto and Sasuke are able to handle Kabuto, and Orochimaru will end up leaving empty-handed, and Tsunai will become the fifth Okage after all that Naruto and Sasuke did to convince her to do so. A little bit later, Jirai will have a discussion with the two Uchiha brothers about the next three years. Naruto says, wait, you want us to go on a train trip for a few years? Jirai nods and says, the Akatsuki are a growing threat and they will come for Sasuke in a few years. And Orochimaru is also after you, Naruto. I think it is best that you both come on this journey with me. Though, I won't be the only one training you. Itachi then walks through the door and will say, I will also come to train you too. Sasuke says, really Itachi? Itachi nods and says, I will help you too to make sure you are both strong enough to face the Akatsuki and Orochimaru. You are both very powerful right now, especially for your age, but against a group of s rank shinobi, it will not be enough. That is why you need this training. For you both, I will make sure you are both educated in everything there is about the Uchiha clan and their techniques. And for Naruto, myself and Jiraiya will make sure you finish your training with the gentle fist. Meanwhile, Sasuke, you will get an education in Uzumaki seals, which were the same seals I used to prevent Orochimaru from never being able to use Jutsu again. Sasuke and Naruto just grin, and then Fugaku will come into the room and say, You'll be a bit lonely without my sons here for a bit, but... I know you'll become extremely strong when you eventually return. Naruto and Sasuke smile and Naruto will say, You can count it, Dad. And the three brothers will all share a hug with each other. Jirai will then say they will leave in a week so they will have time to have one last week in Konoha and eventually say goodbye to their friends and stuff like that. Meanwhile, we see Rochimaru having a lot of issues at the moment as he has still been severely damaged by Itachi's seals and the time is coming for him to find a new body. Orochimaru then says to Kabuto, Kabuto, summon the Sound 4. Kabuto does so, and the Sound 4 will arrive, and they'll ask Orochimaru what he wants them to do. Orochimaru will then say, Bring me Naruto Uchiha. The Sound 4 will nod, and will head to the Hidden Leaf village. Let's get right into part 6. Anyways, the Sound 4 will come for Naruto, and will first try to get him to their side by convincing him through the power of the curse mark but that's gonna fail because naruto is not sasuke and sasuke isn't sasuke in this timeline and so when that inevitably fails they try to shanghai him but itachi and shisui have something to say about that as they both appear and they dominate the sound four because curse mark or no curse mark you are not going to do anything against itachi and shisui all they would have to do is breathe on you and you're done Anyways, with the incident, there is no Sasuke rescue mission or Naruto rescue mission, and that means we see Naruto and Sasuke say their goodbyes before heading out on a three-year journey. By the way, let me clarify the Sasuke isn't Sasuke point real quick. Sasuke isn't Sasuke in the sense that he's not the same character he was in part one, mostly because, again, he has to go through tragedy. Since, you know, Itachi didn't have to massacre the entire Chia clan. So, Sasuke hasn't gone through that trauma. <laughs> Anyways. Before Sasuke and Naruto leave, Sasuke is spending a bit more time with Hinata, and during the moonlight where they're having a bit of a, I guess you could say, you know, hanging out and stuff like that, they have a bit of a kiss, and then you all are going to be talking about, you know, right now, what about Naruto's mate, since I have made it clear that, you know, Naruto is not getting together with Hinata, well, you'll see her during a time skip, especially since she's a character that is heavily, heavily underused in the Naruto series. Anyways, Sasuke and Hina will blush and will wonder if this is the start of a relationship, but they will have to wait for any day in the start since Sasuke is leaving on a freer train trip. They'll see if they still have feelings for each other after three years, and if they do, they'll start dating then. Now, I'm going to make a point clear here. Regular Sasuke is someone I cannot see with Hinata, 
but a Sasuke who hasn't gone for a trauma that he went for when he was eight years old, yeah, that's a bit different. <laughs> Anyways, a group of Itachi, Jiraiya, Sasuke, and Naruto will depart, and we will now fast forward to one year later. Naruto and company will be stopping in a village called the Waterfall Village. Oh yeah, you know where this is going. Now we'll see my boy Naruto meet this girl named Fu. Both take a bit of a liking to each other, especially since my boy Naruto, let's be honest, is a catch. And both will have a bond created, and Dryad will notice this, and he'll make notice to come back here more often, probably because if those two become a couple, he can get research off of them, but really, he just wants my boy Naruto to win. Sasuke will tease him on his relationship with Fu, as well as Itachi, and Naruto, of course, will be embarrassed by the constant teasing. The bond between Fu and Naruto grows as there are more visits to the Waterfall Village, and eventually it becomes a relationship. However, as they're about to go into this relationship, Fu reveals that she is in Cherokee and expects some scorn and stuff, but Naruto is accepting since, again, Sasuke is Asian Cherokee himself. And again, why wouldn't Naruto be accepting because he's Naruto and enjoy Fu and Naruto share a kiss? Fu will then tell Naruto about the treatment that she has experienced in the village, and Naruto is understandably angry about this. Now, I know people might have some other question about this, about saying, well, we haven't really seen other Jinchuriki experience the same treatment as Naruto, but I will respond to that with saying, we haven't really seen the different cultures of the other villages of how they treat Jinchuriki, besides, you know, the Sand Village, which did not like Gaara at all. I don't think we have anything about the treatment of Han and Roshi, besides pieces here and there. And of course, in the Cloud Village, I feel like a lot of people were generally accepting of B and Yugito, but that's most because B's brother is the freaking Rekage. You're, you, you don't want to piss him off. <laughs> like, if you're gonna, if you mistreat his brother, you're gonna you feel the wrath of him. We've seen how A can get. <laughs> Yeah, and, I, and that would be understandable because you're, you, ain't, you ain't gonna mess with my brother. You ain't gonna mess with my brother if, in that situation. In the Mist Village, we kind of saw that Yakur got respect, but I think that was more so because he could control the free tales pretty well until, you know, the stuff that happened with him happened with uh, Obi Till and company. And then, of course, there is the Waterfall Village, which I don't think we have a lot of information about because, well, the only time we really saw the Waterfall Village was in a movie, and then Fu would get Shanghai'd. Oh yeah, I also almost forgot about the Six Tales, which was more so discussed in the filler episode. Yeah, we don't really have a lot of information about, like, the type of lives some in Cherokee live, besides, again, Gara and, obviously, B and maybe somewhat Yugito, even though it probably comes more so from B's perspective, I guess. And then, of course, uh, Naruto. Huh, that's interesting. So, since Kishimoto's not filling in those blanks, I have to kind of fill them in. Anyways, even though Naruto wants to do something about the situation, he can't really do anything because Fu is in Jinchuriki, and there is no way that the waterfall is going to give up the equivalent of a nuclear bomb willingly, even if the waterfall village is not a major village. Also, by the way, it makes no sense why the Seven Tales of All Fanes is stuck in a place called the Waterfall Village. It ain't one of the major five villages. You have all the major villages get Jinchuriki, and, and instead of giving them the Mist or the Sand Village the Seven Tales, you give it to this irrelevant village in the middle of, like, nowhere or whatever. It, it just makes absolutely no sense. What, what are you doing, Hashirama? What the hell are you doing? Off of that rant, Naruto and company decide to make at least an attempt, and while the village leader Shibiki would like Fu to be happy, and does not really see much of a point of a minor village like the Waterfall Village having ancient Cherokee, the Waterfall Ninja Council is kind of set in their ways, and believes that having the Seven Tails in the village will offer them protection from the other major villages, especially since they can easily get caught in the crossfire if the villages go to war. Which actually isn't necessarily too bad logic. <laughs> Itachi over hearing this has an idea and sends a letter to Tsunade, who is more than happy to go along with Itachi's idea. The idea is an alliance with the Waterfall Village. They sign a blood oath slash contract that they will never attack the Waterfall Village or attack in Waterfall Village territory, and will offer protection in times of war in exchange for getting the Seven Tails inside their village. The Ninja Council will at first try to refuse this, but then the trump card gets dropped and that is the Akaski card. The Waterfall Village cannot protect Fu in the event of an attack by the Akaski, and judging by the looks of Ninja Council, they absolutely do not want to deal with them, especially if Kisame and company are involved. So they agree to deal as they are forced to cave in. 
part of the contract will ensure that Fu's and Cherokee status is kept hidden, this way she can lead a normal life. Fu kisses Naruto in celebration, and Naruto cannot help but grin, and Sachi and Sasuke can't wait to figure out ways to tease him over this entire thing. Meanwhile, Dry will be thinking of ways to use this for his research, although everyone is happy for Naruto overall. In terms of training, Naruto will improve on his Byakugan and Hyuga style techniques, and of course, Naruto and Sasuke will be dabbling in a lot of techniques and jutsus. Meanwhile, Sasuke will be trying to form a bond with the Ninetales and will be able to make some progress as the fox talks with him, since the fox finds this Uchiha to be somewhat tolerable. He isn't necessarily emo like other Uchiha's. Both Naruto and Sasuke will also get into ceiling, with Naruto getting into more advanced ceiling, while Sasuke gets into the basics of Uzumaki ceiling. Both Naruto and Sasuke will definitely be pretty strong by the end of time skip, especially since Itachi can teach a lot of techniques to Sasuke and Naruto. In addition, Naruto also learns Ross and Shuriken, so that's pretty good for him as well, and it also will work to incorporate other elements into Rasengan, such as fire. Anyways, Jiraiya is able to do a lot of research because Itachi usually takes over and can and will teach a lot of techniques to Sasuke and Naruto. Oh, those poor women. Anyways, Fu will be learning as well under Jiraiya and Itachi since Fu is traveling with Jiraiya and Itachi during this train trip. And this train trip is going to be pretty good for her as she will learn a, some techniques of her own as she seems to be pretty efficient both water and wind in jutsu while also trying to establish a better relationship with her tailed beast. This also gives Naruto the opportunity to take her on dates which will help the relationship a lot and also gives him the opportunity to juke in Jiraiya in his jewels whenever he tries to spy on Fu and Naruto. So yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> Anyways, Naruto's life is also a tease where a nightmare but he will be getting his revenge pretty soon as the train time skip will end and everyone comes back to the village, and then Hinata will meet with Sasuke and Naruto and gives them both a big hug. Naruto will then introduce his girlfriend Fu, and Hinata will be really happy that Naruto well, has a girlfriend and will shake Fu's hand. Team 7 will then be debriefed by Tsunade, and then Kakashi will give the team a test, well, you know, the same bell test, and then Kakashi will test his team by himself, and will do this soul since, since Kakashi is stronger his timeline, due to having a lot of sparring matches with Itachi and Shisui. Team 7 in short order will complete the test, and this leads to Sasuke and Hinata having a discussion about their relationship, and will look to start dating very soon. Then there will be news that Gar has been Shanghaied by the Akatsuki, and everyone will move in order to get him back, and Hinata will take Sakura's role in this canon since she is Tsunai's apprentice and has been trained under her in this time skip, and She's able to heal people like Konkuro and will create an Ansu since it wouldn't be a good idea to go into battle without one, especially against someone like Sasori. In short order, this arc will go the same way, but Hinata is going to be a bit more effective in this battle since she can easily aim for Sasori's weak spot with her Byakugan, more so his heart, along with Chio helping her out as well. And I would talk about Team Guy's contributions, but no one in the timeline thinks to use clones, so Team Guy will still fight their copies. Meanwhile, Deidre will escape like a cannon from Naruto and Sasuke and Kakashi, and then Gar will be revived like a cannon, and the Kazakage rescue mission will go off without a hitch. Unfortunately, though, Shio still dies, but who really cares about her? We will probably now go over a decent chunk of Shippuden, which should be fun. First, we'll see our favorite Team 7 return, and both Naruto and Sasuke will get together with their girls and do some couple stuff. Yes, dates and nice romantic moments. What else could I mean, you perverts? Anyways, there is no Tenji bridge arc as Sasuke is in the village, and the entire motivation for meeting Kabuto at Tenji Bridge, and by extension Orochimaru, was to get info on Sasuke and maybe even possibly meet him after three years, which obviously cannot happen here. Also, someone asked me what I meant by someone getting Shanghai, which is a term I use a lot, so I'll explain. It refers to dudes in the 1800s getting forced to do labor via kidnapping on ships heading to Shanghai. So, that's some history knowledge that you may or may not have asked for. Anyways, this arc we spent training and chilling for Team 7 and the rest of the Konoha 12. Actually, for Team, Natafu is here in the village. When it comes to the next arc, which is going to be the battle with Hidana Kagasu, also known as the Akatsuki Suppression Mission, will have to be determined is whether or not Asuma is going to get packed up, or is he going to pay his child support? 
well, let's start who is going on this mission. Shishui, Asuma, the two Chunin Gate Guards, and Shikamaru. Yeah, I forgot the two Chunin Gate Guards names, I cannot bother. So, there's a chance Asuma survives, you say, with Shisui there? Well, yes, but unfortunately, those chances are like 30% because while Shishui is strong, he is preoccupied with Kagasu throughout the fight, so Asuma will get Joshin like in canon and will die. Which is about to set up a bit of a revenge tour in a bit in Yakasuke's fresh mission, like in the original canon. But first, I must say, it is so sad that Asuma keeps getting away with this. How can this man keep getting away with not paying his child support? This cannot stand! Let me know if you want a full speech in the comments below. Anyways, meanwhile, Naruto will be working to combine his fire element into the Rasengan, thereby creating a Rasa Nova when he learns the news of Asuma getting packed up. Naruto and of course Team 10 mourn the man's death, but Shishui is also very pissed because Asuma died on his watch. So he vows to get revenge on Hinan and Kakuzu, meaning that these two are not in for a fun time. Naruto will also be comforted by Fu since he's feeling depressed over the loss of Asuma, which will help their relationship grow. And now we'll see Team 10, Kakashi, and Shisui go to war against the Akasuki. And we'll see Kakashi and Shishui face off against Kakazu. And while Shikamaru goes and claps Hidan real quick, Naruto will appear with his Rasa Nova along with his Sage Mode. And will, instead of tearing his chakra network from the inside out, will burn it instead. And there will be no negative effects on Naruto since he has Sage Mode. Pretty easy clap for Naruto, not gonna lie. Now we'll see Naruto and company head back and everyone will just chill for a bit. Meanwhile, Rochimaru and Kabuto will be looking for an alliance with the Akatsuki. The reason is that the Hidden Leaf has grown too powerful, especially with Itachi and Shisui being there, and with Naruto and Sasuke's progress, it is potentially impossible for any of their goals to be achieved. Sasuke's young QB Uchiha body cannot be given to the Akatsuki, and Rochimaru cannot get his mitts on Naruto's wonderful Uchiha Hyuga body. What is wrong with this man, Kisame will ask. He just wants bodies to possess in order to maintain immortality. I will admit his behavior is a bit weird, but he is not what you think he is, Kawato defends. That's right. I do not like children in that way, Orochimaru says. But hypothetically, if I was. And then the rest of the Akasuki just groan and pain until he just states themselves. I cannot believe we have to work with this guy. And this is the part why I reiterate this again. This joke will never, ever, ever die. You want it to die? Rewrite the entire story of Naruto to make sure a 12 year old boy is not given a hickey by this snake. Got it? Good. Anyways, we'll see Naruto and Komi hear about strange movements with Richmaro at his base. And it's a base that Konoha has been monitoring in secret for a while. And then we're going to see Team 7 on Fatashi and Shisui investigate, because that is the best group that can be sent for this mission. Meanwhile, Dry will go after Pain, like in canon. In terms of this new mission for Team 7, as they investigate the whereabouts of this base, they'll be forced to fight Kabuto, who has been sent by Roshimaru to clean up the base and move out, but it is ill-timing that he had to face off against this insane group. The fight goes about as expected, as Kabuto stands no chance, but he is able to slip away, and the investigation will continue at the base, and Sugetsu will be discovered. They will look to free him under the condition that he complies with them and gets taken into questioning. Sugetsu will comply as he will have no choice in the matter, and being kept in a fish tank for so long has not been fun for him. The Leaf Village will be able to learn that there are not only plans for Orochimaru to join the Akatsuki, but also learn from Sugetsu that there are other bases out there, while also learning their locations, and some more of Rochimaru's prisoners or unwilling servants are there at these other bases. One of the names of the prisoners catches Sasuke and Itachi's attention, Karin Uzumaki. Rochimaru has one of the remaining members of the Uzumaki clan with him. This is something that had to be investigated right away. Meanwhile, Dry was busy with pain, and while he was able to escape because he had perfect sage mode, as Naruto had forced him to achieve a turn in time skip because he wasn't going to lose out to some child, but Jiraiya will unfortunately lose an arm, so he has one less arm to be perverted with. What a tragedy. Pain will decide to invade the leaf like in can, and meanwhile, Sunai will digest Jiraiya's information on Pain, as he explains his theory on who Pain actually is, which is basically Nagato controlling six bodies. 
whatever pain actually was, the leaf would have to be prepared for him regardless. Meanwhile, as Fu and Naruto are on a date, they'll get summoned and be briefed on this information, and both will be sent away to Mount Miyakboku to train, and if pain appears, Naruto and Fu will be summoned. Meanwhile, Orochimaru will be frustrated that his base was invaded like that, and a valuable asset like Suigetsu was lost. He has to start moving pieces like Karin and Jugo around to make sure they don't get taken from him by the leaf. If he loses those assets, it could make things hard for him, especially since he's gonna need a new body soon. Either he gets that young Hyuga Uchiha body of Naruto, or he has to get a replacement body again, and he won't get either if his assets are gone. Meanwhile, Pain will arrive at the gates of Kona, ready to go on an all-out assault. As this is going on, Itachi and Sasuke will be briefed that they'll have to stay in the Leaf Village, which will somewhat frustrate too, but they'll have to understand since this is a much bigger problem at the moment. Though they really, really, really want to go and find Karin. So, where we last left off was the Pain Assault arc, and we'll now go over what happens when Pain attacks a new and improved Leaf Village with Shisui and Itachi and Fugaku. Naruto and Fu will end up being summoned eventually, but the Leaf Village is relatively able to hold its own and there are less casualties in this arc compared to the original canon because again, Itachi, Shisui, and of course even Sasuke are here to kind of slow down Pain a little bit. I mean, they're like kind of carrying the Leaf Village right now like Aaron Rodgers was carrying the Packers in 2016 or when LeBron James carried the Cavs how many times. Anyways, eventually Naruto and Fu, mostly Naruto, will finish the job, and then Naruto will of course go talk to Jisoo Nagato like in canon, and Nagato will revive everyone like he did in canon, and he'll still die unfortunately because his body was just way too weak, and he's still reviving a decent amount of people, even the fodder. Moving on to the Kage summon arc, a massive chunk of this arc is vastly different because Sasuke is still in the village, so one of the more pivotal points of Sasuke essentially being labeled a fugitive, well, isn't happening. While the village rebuilds, Danzo will have no means to take over because Tsunade will have extra less energy in the fight against Pain, though she will have to get some rest after the Pain fight regardless, but she should be back in fine condition in a week or so. Danzo, tired of getting denied his rightful place as a Hokage, will decide to try full hostile takeover of the village, but will be stopped by Naruto and company. They'll put Donzo in prison, and let's just say Donzo is due for an execution order very soon, due to some of the files that are obtained after essentially no diffing Donzo. And for those of you who are not familiar with power skill in terms, essentially what that means is they completely collapse his cheeks. <laughs> Not in that way, you perverts. Anyways, after Tsunade is done resting, we'll see her decide to bring Naruto and Sasuke with her as bodyguards, as the five Kage will go talk about the rising threat of the Akatsuki. The meme will go as swimmingly as it can when you got five different personalities and goals, with one of them not really liking your village because of the war, and probably not liking you overall because you look like the son of the guy who was kind of the MVP for the Leaf in the war. But when Obito appears, he'll declare the fourth Great Ninja War like in canon, and we'll see all of the five major villages prepare for war. Sasuke will go train and try to obtain KCM, while Naruto and Fu go with him, because Naruto wants to see the results of his brother's training, and will then eventually learn that Sasuke faces Darkseid, along with being able to meet his mother Kushina for the first time. Remember, Kushina is Sasuke's mother in this canon, while Naruto's mother is Mikoto. Bit of a difference in marriage, but you know, doesn't matter. Both women are pretty hot, not gonna lie. <laughs> Anyways, Naruto and company will eventually head back to the battlefield, in the end, a lot of events will go the same as they did in canon, but we'll see Itachi and company make some very significant contributions, including Itachi with his Tosca Blade. Now, you might be wondering if Itachi still has his ninja disease, and then I'll raise the point of if Itachi has a disease like this, why in the hell wouldn't the greatest medical ninja in the history of the ninja world figure out a cure? Yeah, Itachi ain't bowing out here due to the disease, so be happy. Itachi will end up losing an eye due to using not Izanagi, but Izanami to sacrifice one of his eyes to stop not Kabuto, but Roshimaru. And Kabuto will have to go for an identity crisis, but it will be in prison most likely. The rest of the war will remain the same, including the rise of Ten Tails, Fu, and Sasuke will lose their respective tail beasts. Sasuke will be revived and have a bit of not only a Renegon in one eye, but he also has a six pass Sage Mode. 
Which is extremely, extremely powerful, by the way. Naruto, after trying to fight Madara, essentially taking the place of Sasuke, will be able to obtain his own new form, having a Rinnegan in one eye and a Tensigon in the other eye, and having a Tensigon-like cloak. And it is revealed by Higuromo that he is not only the reincarnation of Indra, but also apparently has the chakra of Hamura. Hey, I'm trying to make Hamura more relevant somehow, and... If Kishimoto can't do that, then why can't I? You know what I'm saying? And the Tensigon has literally no love except a freaking movie, so why not? Anyways, the duo will still have to face off against Madara. And while they, along with Hinata, who has had trained from Tsunade, are able to put up some form of a fight, it's still not enough because, well, Madara is Madara, and the infant Sukiyomi will still be cast, and then Kaguya will appear, and eventually, Naruto and company will win the fight, and there will be no Valley of the End fight because, well, Naruto and Sasuke are chill and they're brothers. And while it is said that Naruto and Sasuke will end up trying to kill each other in the fight of Ashura and Indra, they break that cycle pretty easily. Naruto will be devastated seeing Fu still dead, as again, she had its seven tails drained out of her, but he will then revive her with the human path, and Naruto will live because, remember, Nagato's body was very weak, and he was reviving many, many people at once, while Naruto has a young Uchiha and young Hyuga body, which should be enough to withstand the effects of the human path, and be able to revive Fu, no problem. Oh crap, I'm turning to Orochimaru. Speaking of Orochimaru, again, having gotten collapsed in war, he is stuck in prison, along with Kabuto, which honestly probably should have happened in Naruto considering what both of these men did. Like seriously. Kabuto literally starts the fourth Green Ninja War and Orochimaru is one of the most notorious criminals on this planet and he somehow avoids jail time? Really? Again, I get it. You know, you want to be friends with him and stuff and that's fine and all, but have this man pay for his crimes like Sasuke did? I mean, fair is fair, right? Anyways, in this canon as well, he was fighting with the Akatsuki, not against them. So, yeah, he definitely gonna rot in that prison cell. And Danzo will, of course, eventually be executed, so... Free cheers, the wicked Warhawk is dead. Later, Sasuke and Tachi are able to meet Karin, and she'll be very happy that she has family left in this world. And she'll end up living in the Leaf Village to, you know, be with her family. Meanwhile, since Jiraiya lives, he'll be getting with Tsunade, and we'll then see Sasuke marry Hanada, while Fu and Naruto get married, and both those ceremonies will be pretty nice. Meanwhile, Sakura will get with Lee, because why not? I actually like Sakura with Lee a lot, actually. So, yeah. And then, Neji will still be dead in his continuity, because I couldn't see a way for his death to be prevented even though naruto and sasuke are a lot stronger in his canon i still can't see him being able to avoid the wood or whatever the hell was shot out of the ten tails that ended up killing him so unfortunately ten ten is still gonna be single and ready to mingle but hey ten ten i'll slide in and be your hubby if you know what i'm saying i mean i'm a big fan of mills <laughs> anyways fugaku will also finally become hokage and the streak of knowing she is becoming hokage early because most likely sard is going to be the next hokage in the boruto timeline something else that happens is that itachi and his girlfriend izumi are also able to tie the knot which is definitely an upgrade compared to what happened in the original timeline because Oh boy, if you read some of the light novels and stuff of what happened with Itachi and his girlfriend, it's pretty, pretty sad. Anyways, Naruto and Fu will have their own children, one being Borto, the other being Himawari, who has more of Fu's features mixed in, along with Naruto's Hyuga genetics, I guess you could call them, because she has Byakugan, while Borto has a Sharingan and a talent for Hyuga Taijutsu. So, not as different as in canon, although this time, I guess if Boruto ever got trained by Sasuke, he would be able to train him in the Sharingan as well. Meanwhile, Sasuke and I will each have their own children, and one of them will have one Sharingan and one Byakugan eye, while the other is more part Hyuga, part Uzumaki. If you want me to go into Boruto, let me know in the comments below, but to end off the serious question of the day, do you think Karin should have gotten hitched or married in the actual Naruto canon, or should better off being lonely? This is something that I've kind of had a bit of a debate on, by the way, because I feel like Karin, while she definitely comes across as a bit of a Sasuke fangirl, I think at least deserves somebody. Like, come on. I mean, hell, they did Shino dirty as well, and he definitely deserves somebody. 
but I think Karin definitely should have gone with somebody herself, but let me know what you think. Because at the end of the day, I could be wrong. And that is the end of the Half Fuga Half Uchiha Naruto series. I hope you all enjoyed this series overall, and yeah, this was a very fun series to make, but it's time to move on. And hopefully I can finish more and more series as time passes. Well, that is probably about it. Shouts to my entire patrons and my entire patrons slasher and Gabe Tidwell. Everyone wants to shout like these to my patrons link in the description. Shout out to you guys for watching the video. And let's get to 6 k And this has been your boy, the MSH Center Peace or Ha. Cue that outro, baby.